Welcome back, everyone, to another powerful episode of the IFBB Pro Ask Me Anything podcast, where cutting-edge science meets elite performance. I'm your host, Dr. Dwayne Jackson. I'm an ex-pro athlete, a neurovascular physiologist, a researcher, and someone who's been waist-deep in health performance and science for decades. Now, before we get started, a quick uh, important note. Uh, the information that we share in this episode and others is intended for educational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Remember to always consult with a qualified healthcare professional before starting any new treatment, including peptide therapies. Neither I, Dr. Dwayne Jackson, nor the IFBB Pro AMA podcast are responsible for individual health outcomes related to the application of this information. All right, now that we've got that covered, let's get right into this. Now, if you're serious about optimizing recovery, enhancing performance, improving your skin and hair health, or you're thinking about long-term generative strategies, you'll definitely want to learn more about what GHKCU may offer. So first off, what is GHKCU? Well, GHKCU stands for glycyl l histidyl l lysine copper 2 complex It's a naturally occurring tripeptide that was first isolated from the human plasma back in the early 70s by a guy named Dr. Pickhart. Uh, and he was researching blood components involved in tissue repair. Now, GHKCU has been reported to act as a master regulator of repair. And studies suggest it supports wound healing. It also promotes tissue remodeling. It reduces inflammation, activates stem cells, and modulates gene expression. And genomic analyses of uh, GHKCU and its effect in the body um, indicate that it may influence the activity of over 4,000 human genes, enhancing those associated with regeneration while downregulating genes that are linked to inflammation and fibrosis. So clinically, it's been observed that GHKCU levels decline with age. And some uh, early studies have actually shown that plasma levels of GH or sorry of copper and GHKCU in young adults are estimated to be around 200 nanograms per mil. And those levels actually uh, go down. They drop below 80 nanograms per mil in those over 60 years old. So we see this decline and it is thought to correlate with reduced regenerative capacity. So slower wound healing and uh, we see this a lot in the skin and hair aging process. Now, athletes, clinicians and researchers are now becoming increasingly um, interested in exploring GHKCU because it's got this whole multi-dimensional biological um, effects on the body. So first, studies suggest that GHKCU enhances tissue, tissue regeneration, which I've mentioned a few times. And the research uh, out there has reported that it stimulates collagen synthesis and angiogenesis, which leads to improved blood vessel formation and tissue repair. So angiogenesis is the formation of vascular sprouts from existing vessels. And the more of that we can get in certain tissues, the, uh, the more blood flow we get to those areas and the greater the turnover of nutrients and um, bad cells and everything else um, occurs. So uh, the second thing that GHKCU appears to exhibit is anti-inflammatory properties. And experimental models um, looking at this actually indicate it reduces cytokines inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha and interleukin-6. And it also downregulates NF-kappa B. And this uh, NF-kappa B activity is known to be a major driver of inflammatory responses. So overall then, the effects of GHKCU on these cascades support a reduction in chronic inflammation when it's used. Now, thirdly, in dermatological studies and cosmetic studies, GHKCU has been reported to improve skin elasticity, reduce wrinkles, and stimulate hair follicle activity. This makes it a real popular peptide when it comes to anti-aging and hair restoration therapies. And there are some emerging preclinical evidence that points towards 
neuroprotective effects of GHKCU in the body. And some of the studies actually suggest it may protect, protect neurons against oxidative stress and promote cognitive resilience. This is a really good thing because when you look at the whole aging process, you know, we see loss of hair, skin health goes down, inflammatory responses go up, and the ability for us to think fast and uh, maintain memory does start to decline. So all these areas seem to be, um, at least for now, uh, um, shown to be beneficial when we're using um, GHKCU.